Hi there, my name is Amanda McCulloch and I'm the Operations Director for the Data Visualization Society. We're excited to continue our Viz Responsibly series today, speaking with Heather Krause. Heather is the founder of the We All Count initiative, and I'm excited to talk to you today about all things equity and data. Heather, how are you? I'm great. Thank you for having me, Amanda, in this very important initiative, which I'm a fan of. Oh, thank you. Uh, so tell us, about, just to kick it off, about the We All Count initiative. What is it that you're doing or you're focused on or your goals? Yeah, great. So We All Count came out of about 15 years of my uh, growing frustration of being a data scientist in the social sector and working for really well-meaning governments, great nonprofits, um, fantastic people, all usually accidentally doing very racist, very colonial, very sexist things with data. Um, under the guise of um, data is objective and um, evidence-based means we're removing the bias, all myths that were being propagated. Um, but I was going back and forth between the shiny boardrooms of DC, New York, and Seattle to the fields of South Asia, um, continent of Africa, et cetera. So I was seeing firsthand that these things were not <laughs> as they seemed. Um, and it's, I just was very close to quitting the social sector um, and going to work for an organization that wasn't pretending to do good, was just trying to make all the money it could. Um, I had to take one more shot at it and founded We All Count, which is an initiative for equity in data. So we're focused specifically on the math, on the data, and we work, we developed a seven point framework for embedding equity into your data projects that works in the corporate sector, the social sector, the nonprofit sector. And um, I can, uh, don't have to work for a big corporation yet. <laughs> there you go. It's funny, my, my background is actually in international development and global health. And so a lot of these themes that I'm seeing pop up, I think hit so close to home because I think back at some of the mistakes that I've made in the past parts of my own career and kind of being a little bit cringy about things you said, did, or just mistakes you made out of pure ignorance. A hundred percent. I, I um, just found myself accidentally doing very, very colonialist racist things <laughs> and was like, I didn't mean to do that. I think it's a great point to think about kind of how our own pasts all kind of temper our understandings of what that looks like today. And I know currently kind of in the lexicon of current literature, there's been a lot of focus on the various bias and open data sets related to gender. Like I think about books like Invisible Women or Data Feminism and all the different constraints and concerns we have there around gender bias and data. But I think you've dove into a lot more of the nuanced and perhaps stickier, trickier topics related to race and data. So um, what other issues should data visualize be thinking of that go beyond some of these kind of surface level considerations? Yeah, I'm so glad you phrased it that way because there's certainly a great value in becoming aware that there are problems and that there is gender bias in some of the data sets who, um, if you want to work with data of any type, that you really take it through a systematic strategic thought process that identifies all the different points um, from the conception of the data through the communication of the data at whose worldviews are being embedded. Because I think that's the most important point. If I could say one thing, um, people will come to me and they say, okay, I want to I make my data biz objective. I want to make sure I'm using unbiased data. And I say, that's impossible. You cannot. There's no such thing as unbiased data. There's no such thing as a bulletproof data biz. Um, your only hope is to be very transparent and aware of what worldviews and biases have been embedded. That's your, that's your only hope. <laughs> mm -hmm. It sounds almost like the ways that journalists think about sources, as they think about how they look at the, the bias in their sources, who's, who's being paid by who, what kind of worldview do they bring? Like we can bring some of that same level of kind of thoughtfulness, I think, to how we think about data sets. Well, I'm so glad you said that because that's actually the very first tool even before we had We All Count that we developed was data biographies and it was working with data journalists um, and realizing that data journalists were using data in a much different way than they were using traditional sources and that they would put data in that just because they kind of trusted the place it came from. And I was like, are you kidding me? Would you do that with any human being? And that you really need to understand the whole biography, the who, the who, the what, the where, the why, the how. Um, and if you don't have the time to do all of that, you should not include the data in your source. And you should certainly not make a visualization of that data. 
So it opens up an interesting question to me around kind of who bears the responsibility around making sense of that data. So there's current, there's certainly the data scientists and analysts who are running those analyses and doing the complex math. There's journalists who are trying to make sense of those results for the broader population. And then there's all of us who read data journalism and work as part of our day to day lives. So who bears the responsibility for getting this right? Um, that's a fantastic question. And I think the definition of who gets this, who bears the responsibility to get this right depends on how you're defining right. Um, again, the, anyone who's claiming that they have objective unbiased data is not getting it right. And that's nobody's responsibility because it's not possible. And I, I think that's the number one thing that we have to <laughs> kind of push back against because we're all trying to get it right. Like, do the objective thing, do the best practices data viz. And getting it right um, means getting it transparent so that if anybody, if you're a journalist and anybody's gonna read your piece or if you're a data visualizer and anyone's gonna look at your data viz, um, there's a lot of best practices to make sure that people can understand it. Um, a lot of those best practices are not cross-cultural, but we can talk about that at different times. But, um, <laughs> um, but but it is your responsibility if you're producing it. Data visualization that people understand what worldviews are embedded in it um, because um, the data is not objective and it's very, very powerful. The subliminal message that a data visualization can send a, a data visualization has both an explicit rhetorical purpose and then whether, whether you intend it to or not, it has an implicit um, visual artifact that you are calling on to depict in a data visualization that are the result of many, many seemingly minor decisions. Um, mm -hmm. But they seem minor because they're habitual and they're part of your culture and they're the way you were taught to see things and learn things. And so you ha it is your responsibility to make the decisions transparent. I like that in terms of thinking about transparency and being honest about where information comes from. And I think we've seen that kind of top of mind in the current environment with COVID around who's right. collecting and capturing this data, how it's being captured. And it's created a lot of questions that force us to ask big questions about data collection processes and what that looks like. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. The, the COVID crisis uh, is definitely highlighting um, many of the existing problems. <laughs> For sure. The, uh, so I think about this as like you and I are sitting here talking today, you and I are two white women having a conversation mm -hmm. about bias yep. and data, about yep. racial bias and data and other things. I think they're important conversations to have, but it really exemplifies the fact that our industry is disproportionately white, especially here yep. in the US. And so I'm curious what recommendations or ideas you have for how we create a more inclusive, diverse field as data visualization professionals and data scientists. Yeah, um, I think that's a very important question. And thank you for acknowledging that we definitely are both white. Um, and um, I'm all for finding ways to include greater diversity in, you know, the pipeline and the data visualization um, sector. However, without a different curriculum and a different set of best practices, we can include the most diverse people in the world and they'll, they'll just be replicating the white patriarchy. <laughs> So I believe in I believe in diversifying diversifying the workforce and the human resources aspect, but I don't think that's going to be enough. Mm -hmm. um, and in terms of your question about where I look, um, I try to spend as much time as possible learning and listening from people who are um, not white. Um, I've had the privilege of working most of my um, professional life outside of um, the global north, so the majority of my colleagues aren't white. Um, it's just recently that I'm getting a lot of white colleagues. Um, and um, some of the resources that I would recommend are, um, there is an organization in the United States called Data for Black Lives, which mm -hmm. is um, founded by an amazing person, um, Yashim Milner, who actually just did a, they just did a report on um, COVID. And I would recommend anything that they do. Um, there's, in Canada, there's a really, really cool resource. One of my favorite resources is called nativeland.ca. Hmm. And that's a map 
that you can add to and download and use in your projects um, a map of North and most of South America and the geographical boundaries that existed before colonial treaties. Hmm. So it, I use it a lot to just demonstrate that when people say they can't um, make a data viz from any perspective other than the white, I'm like, actually, here's a map that <laughs> you could make. You don't have to use colonial boundaries to make to make map visualizations. They exist. Um, Dr. Emma Ben is doing a lot of amazing work in, in um, the medical health field about how to not use race as a covariate. Of course, in COVID, it's and anything else is very important to include disaggregated data, mm -hmm. um, but that's not that's not even close <laughs> to a resting point um, because providing disaggregated data by race can often accidentally lead people to think that certain problems are racial problems when they are not. Mm -hmm. They are oppression problems. They are lack of services problems. They are, um, like there's very good examples of research on, um, that ends up saying stuff like the, the black body is more likely to get severe asthma, which is mm -hmm. of course not true at all. Um, bodies living really close to factories and highways are more likely to get severe. So you have to, it's very important to disaggregate data by a bunch of social identities, but it, then it's very important how, to, how we communicate about that, especially mm -hmm. as data visualizers, that we don't put the onus of power or decision where it isn't. Well, I think that to me speaks to the importance of text and communication around the visualizations that we create. I mean, I saw this in terms of when we first yeah. started seeing numbers that showed that COVID in, uh, confirmed cases were disproportionately from communities of color, that the way that was framed and the language we used was not necessarily something that pointed to this being an issue of systemic racism or other, other uh, environmental factors, but really blaming a certain group based on their biology. And that is unfair and incorrect and inaccurate. And I think in some cases, um, right. not purposeful, uh, just people not thinking about the ways in which their sentences could be misunderstood or misread. Exactly. I, I do agree that a lot of times it's not purposeful racism, which is why I think it's really important that we work towards an anti-racist set of best practices um, in data visualization culture and data culture in general, mm. um, because what I've learned in the last 10 years, especially in data visualization, is that you know, the reason people love data visualization is it's so powerful. Mm -hmm. And it communicates to an entirely different part of your brain. And that part of your brain that it communicates to is full of um, hidden stories. And just by the way we were raised, the country in which we were raised, those hidden stories are racist. Mm -hmm. and, and when you're making a data viz, unless you're specifically using an anti-racist set of data viz techniques <laughs> that, I mean, it just, it just seems like it's so objective, but it so isn't. Um, you'll be using accidentally all kinds of images, um, lines, colors, um, the whole thing mm -hmm. will. Oh. And I know that you, you teach a workshop, if I'm not mistaken, on some of those ways to be anti-racist and how we present information and those kind of things, correct? Yes, yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> if someone is looking for and saying, I'm not sure how to make sense of that, I think I want to yeah. make sure I point to the fact that there are people actively thinking about this. So the same way we think about accessibility and trying to right. be better in terms of how we address accessibility, we should also look to people who have tried to make sense of this and at least we can make incremental progress in the right direction. Absolutely. I mean, that, that's exactly what We All Count is about. Um, I'm in no way saying I've got this problem solved. Um, none of my colleagues are saying, okay, good, we've, we've worked this out. Um, we've figured out how to fix it. We're really trying to get the right questions <laughs> going um, and, and together to develop some, some new, new best practices that are anti-racist. Um, so yeah, absolutely. And um, I basically say, you know, we're, we're learning in public. <laughs> we're, sure. we're learning in public how to uh, get the racism and colonialism and sexism and homophobia out of our data biz because it, it's mostly not there intentionally. Sure. And, and I, I applaud you for like the willingness to kind of learn in public in that way. I think it's, it's commendable. 
Uh, I think in, in doing so, though, I think you've been one of the people really pushing us in a lot of ways before anyone started talking about the problems of COVID data to talk about kind of how do we visualize data more responsibly as data visualizers and also as people interacting with and consuming charts and graphs. So I'm curious, like just to close up today, what does viz responsibly really mean to you at its core as a data scientist? At its core, it means making a data viz that anyone who wants to consume that data viz can easily and transparently see what worldviews have been embedded. So well said. Uh, Heather, it has been a delight to talk to you today to learn a bit more about your work. Where can people find you and learn more about We All Count? Sure. We're at weallcount.com. And we have tons of free tools there, lots of things to read. Um, if you want to publish your data viz on there, we'd love to have it. And on Twitter, I'm at at datasist, D-A-T-A-S-S-I-S-T, because that's the Excellent. name of a different company that I own. <laughs> <laughs> well, and we will go ahead and link to a number of those resources, the Twitter handle, the We All Count website, and the places you can find these kind of resources in our article and here in the comments on YouTube. Um, we hope that you've learned a lot from this conversation we've had with Heather today. It's challenged your thinking a little bit, just in thinking about some of the implicit biases that we bring to the work that we do as data visualization professionals, and that you check out some of these great resources on how to kind of deconstruct that thinking and decolonialize your mind. Right, Heather? Thanks so much, Amanda, for all the work you're doing and for initiating this uh, conversation. And I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Have a great rest of your day, Heather. You, Thank you. You too, Amanda. Bye. Bye.